It's the Happy Families Podcast. It's the podcast for the time poor parent who just wants answers now. Here I am paddling around in beautiful water, watching the sunrise and catching waves, and it's not fair that I'm doing this so often. And now here's the stars of our show, my mum and dad. Okay, Mrs. Happy Families, we are at the end of another week. It's I'll Do Better Tomorrow. Welcome to the Happy Families Podcast. For those of you who are new here, we're so glad to have you along. Every Friday, we get intentional about our parenting, what we've learned, what we haven't learned, oh, sorry, what we've learned, what we regret, what we could do better, or what we've actually nailed, and we're so pleased about it. So that's the that's the context in which we're operating. Now, a couple of things just before we dive into this, Kylie. As always, correspondence has been um, on the increase at podcasts, podcasts at happyfamilies.com.au. Uh, got a really cool message that came through from Natalie, who's been doing some research around that whole alpha mum thing on Instagram. I uh, interviewed Eloise Jermick, she's a PhD candidate just uh, in the last week or so about mums who are being affected by what they see on Instagram. And her research basically said, yeah, it doesn't really make a huge difference. But Natalie added to it and she said, I did my thesis on this last year, hopefully coming up for publication soon. Just wanted to note that I found it was the level of investment in Instagram that affected mothers' parenting self-efficacy. The more invested you are in what you're seeing on Instagram, the worse you feel about your parenting. And what, what she also highlighted was the more you are involved in social comparison and the more you subscribe to the intensive mothering ideology, the more it impacts on your ability to feel good about what you're doing as a parent. So in a nutshell, relax, breathe, stop inhaling Instagram and you're probably going to do okay. I love that Natalie shared that because I often find that with research projects, they're just, they're so narrow. Their viewpoint, you know, what they're trying to prove is so narrow. And literally by just stepping outside of it, you know, half an inch, you'll see that there is definitely correlations in different areas. Well, that's the nature of science, inch by inch, centimetre by centimetre, just one small tweak at a time because it's so hard to do really great science. So, Natalie, thank you so much for your email. There's been a handful of others with people saying how much they love you, Kylie, but um, we'll just... You haven't sh- shared them with me. <laughs> Holy smokes. Your head's getting so big. <laughs> oh, you're you, terrible. Every time we you, – you're actually saying, can we record the podcast? Can I host this one? I think that I should be in charge this time. <laughs> actually, we're, we're looking at giving Mrs. Happy Family some extra podcast responsibilities, folks, so sit tight for that. Anyway, let's talk I'll Do Better Tomorrow, Kylie. Uh, what would you say this week has been for you? Uh, what have you learned? What do you regret? Or what did you just get right? I'm not actually sure if I've shared this on the podcast or not, but a couple of weeks ago, um, one of our girls was talking to the school counsellor and the school counsellor suggested if she was really struggling to express her feelings that she should write a letter. She came home and she'd written a letter to express how she was feeling about um, things that were happening in the family. And she kind of just shoved it in my hand as she walked past as she'd come in through the door. And I just thought it was a school note and so kind of was holding it and then I went to put it down and realised that I kind of hadn't given it any thought. And so I kind of just flicked it open, realised what it was and went, oh, okay, this needs time. So I put it down, I finished what I was doing and then I spent um, a few minutes just perusing it and reading it before I called her into the bedroom. And I could feel myself getting worked up because there was a letter with a lot of accusations in it of all of my misdemeanours and things that I was getting wrong. Mm. And all I could see was how ungrateful she was that she wasn't recognising all of the effort that I was doing. But a lot of the things that came out was just her feeling like she was being treated differently to her sisters. And we were able to have this beautiful conversation and help each other to see the perspectives that were being presented. But that flowed on to a really, really challenging moment um, earlier this week uh, where the two girls that are struggling the most in their sibling relationship had a pretty significant altercation just before I got back from my morning walk where I'd, you know, grounded myself. (laughs) I was scented, feeling like I was going to have a great day. And I walked into tears and a lot of angry words. Um, And at first I kind of stormed in and I got the big person in trouble in the, in the relationship Mm. and um, told her that, you know, this was not going to happen again and she was going to have to quit her job because she obviously can't cope with the late nights and we were just not going to do life like this any longer. Yep. And she obviously fought back and there was lots of angry words expressed and I walked away and I thought, wow, what what can I do here? Because this is just not getting any better. And I knew that I hadn't dealt with it right, but I didn't, 
I didn't know what to do. So I asked the two girls to not enter into the same room together, to split up and do what they had to do to get ready for school. And then I just was getting ready and I realised that I had just finished reading something that I thought would be really helpful. So I called the big person into the room and um, I sat down with her and I said, I want to read you something. So I've just finished reading a book by Oprah Winfrey and she shares her closing words with her mum just before she passed away. Anyone who knows Oprah Winfrey's life knows that it did not particularly go to plan or um, she she lived a a childhood of challenge, especially in her relationship with her mum, which was challenging until literally the day she died. She was wrong to tell that her mum was ready to pass away and that she needed to come and she couldn't find the words. She sat there with her for a whole day and she couldn't find the words to articulate to her. And so she left. And the last thing she said to her was, well, I'll be seeing you and walked out the door. And she said, that she recognises she was sitting on the plane flying back to wherever she was flying back to, that she hadn't finished what she needed to finish. And so she turned around and she flew back and she spent another day with her mum and she said still the words didn't come to her until finally um, she was able to use music as an entrance. And um, and in the closing you know, moments with her mum, she recognised that in spite of the fact that her mum wasn't who she wanted her to be, Her mum had done the best with what she had and she was able to offer her grace in that moment and let her know that she understood that as a young girl who'd fallen pregnant, didn't have any support, that that must have been overwhelming and that there were probably lots of people who told her to give up her child and all of these things. And she was able to share and articulate that with her mum and say goodbye to her. And so that might seem like a really long-winded way of kind of coming back to my children who are really struggling. But as I read that with my daughter, I watched her soften and I said, as I'm reading this, can you see any correlation between what Oprah experienced and what you're experiencing now with your sister. And she kind of looked at me and she said, I need to forgive her. And I said, what does that look like? And, and, And I said, and what is it that you need to forgive her for? And she said, she says lots of really horrible things to me and it really hurts. And so we talked about that some more. And, and so I suggested to her that what she needed to do was actually try and see her sister as someone who was trying and someone who was full of her own limitations, just like Oprah has, was able to get to a point in her life where she recognised that her mum was working from a set of limitations. And so as we talked about that some more, I kind of just saw the cogs starting to turn and her starting to soften. And then the most beautiful moment that took place when I actually pulled out a family photo album And it is filled with photos of her and her sister, literally just enveloped in love. Every photo is full of these two little kids with these massive grins. And I said, what do you see in these photos? And she said, we used to be friends. And I said, yeah, you did. And you still both want to be friends. But what's actually happening is you both feel like you're trying. But when each of you tries, the other one puts up a brick wall. And so you both feel like you're trying and you both feel like you're not being heard and you're not being met with the love and attention that you desire. What would happen if you both started working together? How would that impact things? So it was a really hard conversation and it was one that meant the girls didn't get to school on time. Um, And I finally said to her, do you mind if I bring your sister? And she's like, I don't want to talk to her. And I said, I really feel like if we're going to get anywhere with this, we need to bring her in. So I brought her in and obviously she didn't have all of the big uh, lead up to it. And so she was very, very resistant. Um, But as we continued to talk and I continued to help her recognise and see that this was not her big sister's fault, nor was it the little sister's fault. This was a vicious circle that was going in such force that unless somebody was willing to break the cycle, it was going to continue. And that each one of them played a part in that. And by the end of it, I asked each of them to tell me if there was one thing they wanted their sister to know, what would it be? And the younger one looked at me and she said that I love her. And a big sister looked at her and she said that I'm trying. And they were able to go off to school in a calm and loving manner. And it just made me remember that this stuff's hard. 
It's hard for all of us. As a parent, I just want to come in and fix it and stop all of the crazy from going. But it actually took a lot of energy and a lot of time to sit in there hard because it's really hard for them right now. And they're both really hurting and help them to recognize and see that number one, I hear and value them and I see their pain. But in in an effort to help them see each other's pain, hopefully they can start to heal their relationship together. Such hard work. <laughs> Such hard work. So for anyone who's stuck with us for the whole story, uh, I guess the, the real take-home message is you, you, you can't quick fix this stuff. And every time you try to, it's like putting a Band-Aid on, a, a, a bleeding gash, and the Band-Aid might hold it together a little bit, but pretty soon it's going to bleed through the Band-Aid and the Band-Aid will fall off because it gets sodden and it, you, you've actually got to get in and do the surgery. And surgery requires specialty uh, assistance and <laughs> it requires time and it requires the right environment to do surgery well. You've got to really be careful about it. And, and I think what you've just done is perform some remarkable emotional surgery. I'm so glad I was in the surf and didn't have to deal with it. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> yeah, after- you know, the whole reason I lost it was because you weren't there and I was like, I just need Justin here so he can kind of help work through this with me. And when I realized you were not coming home, I had to suck it up and pull it from somewhere. Is it amazing what we can do when we have to? <laughs> it's funny because I was going to use my I'll Do Better tomorrow after the break to talk about how good it's been to go surfing this week because I haven't surfed for so long. I need a new story. It's coming up next. <laughs> if you have more than one child, there's a simple truth. They're going to fight, they're going to compete, and they're going to have relationship troubles. But the real secret isn't how to stop the fighting. It's how to teach them kindness. The Teaching Kids Kindness webinar will help you to do just that, but also help them build lifelong sibling bonds that lead to lifelong friendships. Check out Teaching Kids Kindness at happyfamilies.com.au. It's the Happy Families Podcast, the podcast for the time poor parent who just wants answers now. And yes, you have been surfing quite a bit (laughs) this week. There hasn't been any surf for about four weeks (laughs) and we've had some proper waves this week. So I've taken advantage of it. But my I'll do better tomorrow is actually a reflection on that. I'm not going to change my story. Uh, I have been so fortunate to be able to duck down to the beach almost every morning this week and have a couple of hours in the water, which is such such a luxury, such a privilege, such an incredible thing. Not because of where we, well, partly because of where we live and and, and so on, but 100%, I'm going to say it's because of you and the extraordinary willingness that you show to support me. My I'll do, my I'll do better tomorrow is actually just how much I need to repay you. While I was in the surf uh, on one of those mornings, I thought to myself, this is so unfair. I've left my wife at home to deal with all of the chaos of the children and their crazy fights and do all the, the deep emotional work with the kids when things aren't going right. And here I am paddling around in beautiful water, watching the sunrise and catching waves. And uh, it's not fair that I'm doing this so often. So my old better tomorrow is I actually need to work with you on how you can have those kinds of mornings and I can carry the load a little bit more uh, because it kind of just doesn't feel right even though i love it and even though i don't want to change i know that i probably need to do better for you and um and and so my my thought was i wonder if if there are any dads who are listening to this who kind of do get to please themselves every saturday morning for their golf or their bike ride or their footy or their whatever i wonder what would happen if they just said you know what honey this saturday instead of me doing my thing which i do every single saturday uh this saturday why don't you organize something for you and i'll do the heavy lifting at home so um that's my I'll do better tomorrow. Tomorrow morning, I'm not going to go surfing unless it's really good. I oh, know. I mean, I'm not going to go surfing at all. And uh, you get to go and have some fun and uh, maybe we can balance things out a little bit more. Thanks, son. Okay. We really hope that the ideas that we've shared in this podcast are helpful and that they make a difference in your life. The Happy Families Podcast is produced by Justin Rulon from Bridge Media. Craig Bruce is the executive producer of the Happy Families Podcast. And for more information about how to make your family happier, we would encourage you to visit our Facebook page, Dr. Justin Coulson's Happy Families, where you'll find all the information about our upcoming webinar about boys and their screens. We're talking gaming, we're talking gambling and pornography. A webinar coming up in just a couple of weeks. Details at the Happy Families Facebook page or or at happyfamilies.com.au.